you know, there is a food that is way worse than sugar. Check this out. And I'm going to put all the research down below. This is a chart showing all of the factors that can shorten your life, okay? That can cause you dying, okay? And so at the very top of the list, we have severe obesity can increase your risk of dying by 93%, okay? Then we have heavy smoking, all right, 80%. And then look at what we have right here, vegetable oils, 62%. This is the one that is worse than sugar. Now, as we come down below vegetable oils, we have physical activity, which is 48%, then heavy drinking, 41%, moderate smoking, which is 30%, and only 13% for excessive sugar consumption. And then we have processed meat, 11%, air pollution, 11%, red meat, which I disagree with because they haven't done any studies comparing grass-fed versus grain-fed, and then sodium, which is 3%, which they haven't probably also compared uh, relative ratios of, of potassium, okay? But I just wanted to show you this chart so you can see where vegetable oils are in relationship to everything else. An average person in America consumes 80 grams of vegetable oils. Now, vegetable oils sound really Great, it's oil from vegetables. I mean, there's not a lot of oil in vegetables and that's why it's really not vegetable oil. It's seed oil, it's legume oil, it is grain oil. And by the way, it takes a lot of grain and, and seeds to make just a little bit of oil. But an average person consumes 80 grams of vegetable oil per day, that's six tablespoons. That comes up to 720 calories, which is about 32% of an average person's total calories. So a third of our diet is vegetable oils and the introduction of vegetable oils into our diet to replace saturated fats is probably the biggest change in the last 50 years. And you can also deduct from these numbers some other things like every 5% increase in daily calories from vegetable oils correlates to smoking about seven cigarettes per day. All right, vegetables, seed oil, grain oil, legume oil, not like celery oil or broccoli oil or salad oil, okay? Um, but vegetable oil sounds a lot better. Okay, on this next slide, I have a few more points, but I'm trying to hit home the importance of avoiding vegetable oils because 30% of all of our calories come from these oils right here. We're talking about the soy oil, corn oil, canola, cottonseed, peanut oil, sunflower oil, and safflower oil. I mean, if you look at the label on hummus, for example, they don't use olive oil anymore. They use soy. Sometimes they might use sunflower oil. So the problem with these vegetable oils, extremely pro-inflammatory. They're gonna create a lot of inflammation, especially if they're fried, okay? You heat them. So you go to the restaurant, you get some hors d'oeuvres, usually fried with uh, either corn oil, canola, or soy oil. And so restaurants are the biggest culprit. I can't tell you how many times I go to a restaurant and I leave just not feeling very good. Like I might have like this weird symptom in the back of my throat. I feel bloated. So you really don't know what you're always getting when you actually go out to dinner. So just make sure you read the labels, ask the waiter or waitress, what type of oils do you use, okay? and just order basic things that you know they're not gonna put the oil in because these things add up. 30% of the population in the US consume fast food on a daily basis. So you can only imagine how much omega-6 that's accumulating in their body and what it's doing to the arteries, what it's doing to the pancreas, what it's doing to their brain. In one interesting study, which I'll put down below, there was an increase by 62% death rate of all cause mortality compared to consuming saturated fats. So there's been a huge push to get everyone away from saturated fats to the unsaturated fats, which is a huge, huge mistake. Saturated fats are very, very stable uh, with cooking. They can withstand high heats. You don't have the oxidation, you know, the, the creating of the free radicals when you use saturated fats, especially when you're frying foods. And I don't even talk about reheating at restaurants. Like how often do you think they change the oil? It might be weeks to months. So you're getting these omega-6 oils 
that are reheated over and over and over again. They might filter out some of the debris and some of the burnt uh, particles, but that's a tremendous amount of oxidation. All right, next point. Only severe obesity and heavy smoking are more deadly than vegetable oils on the chart. I mean, that just blows my mind. I mean, sugar, if we compare it to vegetable oils, it's not even in the same ballpark as far as what vegetable oils do to the body. In another study, there was an 82% increased risk of cancer, which makes sense because when you put these products in the body that are so uh, pro-inflammatory, you're creating damage in the DNA. And also cancer tends to follow in areas of inflammation. They tend to migrate in areas where you have inflammation. So only use olive oil, butter, ghee, lard, tallow, or coconut oil when you're cooking and in your food. Now, since we're on the topic of saturated fats, if you haven't seen my video on butter, I put that up right here, check it out.